turn to John chapter number 18. I'm going to read several verses this morning to gain the context of the chapter. I'm going to begin reading verse number 28. The Bible says, Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What occasion, or what accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate, entering into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Savest thou this, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Our souls have been stirred and blessed. Lord, we thank you for these thy people that have assembled themselves on this lovely Sunday morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we thank you for the scriptures. We're thankful for the truth contained therein and the light that shines forth from them. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. I pray that, Father, you would manifest yourself in a wonderful and powerful way. I pray you'd speak to every heart. I pray you'd meet the need of every heart. I pray, Father, if there's anyone here today that is low, that is going through the valley, that, God, they'd be able by the end of this service to throw up holy hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, Father, I pray if there's anyone struggling along, you'd come by. Lord, put your arms around them. Uh, and, Father, help them uh, uh, to make it to the next course. Uh, Father, I pray if there's anybody here today lost without God, uh, the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, would, through cords of love, draw them to an altar of repentance. Uh, God, I pray... Lord, you'd show up big. Lord, you'd help us. Lord, you know what we stand in need of. Father, I pray you'd manifest yourself greatly. Use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice several things. I want you to notice, first of all, the insurrection. Look in verse number 12. The Bible says... Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. And in verse 28, Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. 
we find that there is an insurrection. We find that there are evil men uh, who have come uh, uh, to bind and arrest uh, the darling Son of God. Uh, make no mistake, this did not catch him by surprise. Uh, he had been telling them this is what would happen. Earlier in the evening, he even told his disciples that one of them would betray him. Uh, uh, but can I say, uh, why would there be an insurrection? Jesus uh, uh, had already told them that, that men won't come to the light because their deeds are evil. Uh, and evil men don't want their evil ways to be exposed. Uh, we find they broke every law of the Jews to arrest Jesus that night. I wonder how many laws have been broken in America because evil men don't want their deeds to be manifested. We see an insurrection. People are all for the truth until the truth reveals who they really are. There's an insurrection. It amazes me how many people say, Boy, I love good Bible preaching until preaching parts of their hair. Hmm? Huh? It amazes me how many people say they love Bible preaching, but they don't sit under Bible preaching. They don't really want truth. And we find even Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? There's an ins insurrection. There's also an inquiry. Verses 33 through 38, Pilate's asking Jesus a bunch of questions. He's inquiring to see if Jesus is worthy of death. Let me ask you something. Are you willing to do an inquiry this morning? Are you willing to ask yourself, are you doing exactly what Jesus told you to do to be saved? If you can answer that question, yes, I know that I'm saved, then you need to inquire of yourself, am I living the life that pleases Jesus? There's an insurrection, there's an inquiry, but I want you to see the injustice. Look at verse 39. It says, but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Look in chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Look down at verse number 4. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto him, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Notice the injustice. Uh, several times Pilate has judged him. Uh, several times Pilate has said, I find no fault in this man. Uh, Pilate even had him beaten and brought forth uh, and still says, uh, I find no fault in him. Uh, yet the evil men uh, say, give us a robber. Uh, give us one uh, who is a criminal, uh, who is worthy of death, uh, but not this man Jesus. Uh, uh, he brings him forth, uh, uh, planted with the crown of thorns on his head uh, and the purple robe uh, after he's been beaten. Uh, he says, I find no fault in him. Uh, they said, crucify him, uh, crucify him. What injustice. Uh, why did Jesus go through this? Uh, so you and I wouldn't have to. I look at all that Jesus did in chapter 18. We know in chapter 19 he's crucified. But in chapter 18, we truly see the love of Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach with God's help on oh what love. Oh, I preached Wednesday night on the balm of love and how we should love one another and how we should love others. Huh? But oh, uh, we need to get a glimpse of how he loved us uh, and what he was willing to do for us. Uh, hey, uh, uh, we too will say, blessed be the name of the Lord uh, if we see the undeserved love of God that he showed for you and I. Uh, can I say first of all that Jesus proved his love to man and to you and I um, by the restraint he showed. We're talking God manifest in the flesh. Allowed them to beat him, Brother Tommy. 
allowed them to crucify him, Brother Rod. I allowed him to come and bind him and take him to this place of judgment. He showed restraint because of who he was. If we had time, we'd look up a little earlier when they come to rest him. And they asked him if he was Jesus. And he said, I am. And Brother Ron, the whole crowd fell backwards when he announced who he was. The power that he had. Jesus could have looked at them and said the word and they'd all died. He could have opened up the earth and the earth swallowed them up like he did to the crowd that stood withstood Moses. Hey, he could have sent lightning bolts down and struck them all dead. Hey, he could have spoke the word and they'd have been annihilated uh, but he showed restraint brother Clint uh, cause he looked ahead in time uh, so you as a young boy over here on Oots Lane uh, on your way to hell uh, uh, or over there on Hal Lane but uh, there was a fellow on Oots Lane who cared about you, yeah. told you about Jesus, uh, brought you to the house of God, uh, oh what love he showed restraint because he wanted to see you in heaven uh, I, in my mind, Brother Donald, cannot understand or even comprehend how when Peter smote uh, and cut off Malchus' ear and Jesus rebukes him, said, if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword, then he picks up that sorry, nasty, ugly ear, uh, dusts it off and healed the man, put it back on his head, and they still arrested him. How wicked and evil were these people. The restraint he showed because he knows he has to go to Calvary that's why he left heaven in the first place because that's the only hope for you and I oh what love he proved it by the restraint he showed he proved it by the reproach he endured and I say he suffered pain and woe like we never will you see when Chapter 19 and verse number 1 says they scourged him. They took him into the hall of praetorium. And Brother Charlie, they bound his hands to a whipping post to the point where he was stretched up on his tippy toes. And they took a cat of nine tails, huh? which was a, a, a rod with a bunch of leather straps hanging off of it. Uh, and on the end of those leather straps were pottery fragments and bone fragments. Uh, and they began to smote him uh, across his back uh, and across his body uh, uh, with that uh, cat of nine tails. Uh, and it would wrap around him. Uh, and then when they would pull it, those bone fragments and pottery fragments uh, would pull the flesh off of his body. Uh, uh, they beat him relentlessly. Uh, they punched him with his fists. Uh, they spit upon him. Uh, they beat him so much, Miss Doreen. Uh, uh, and they'd look at him, and then those eyes of God would look upon them with eyes of love. Uh, and Brother Brian, they couldn't stand to look upon him as they's beating him, so they blindfolded him. Uh, uh, because with every blow they gave him, uh, his eyes spoke back to him, I love you. Uh, I'm doing this for you. Uh, I care for you. Uh, uh, they took a crown of thorns, which were spikes, uh, three or four inches as long uh, and they shoved it down on his head uh, peeling the flesh from his brow uh, uh, they uh, uh, um, put a purple robe upon him uh, they mocked him uh, uh, because of the pain uh, because of the reproach uh, uh, that he faced uh, he proved his love uh, he bore his cross down the Via Della Rosa a two mile journey to Mount Calvary uh, and my dear friends uh, he laid down on that cross uh, he didn't wrestle with them. Uh, he didn't fight them. Uh, he yielded himself to the cross. Uh, uh, the Creator uh, allowed the creature uh, uh, to nail him to a rugged cross uh, and suspend it between heaven and earth. Uh, I drop it in a hole. Uh, and there he bled and died for you and I. Oh, what love. He proved his love. Uh, mm by the reproach he endured. He was beaten to within an inch of his life, yet they couldn't kill him. You see, the cross is not what killed Jesus. 
the will of God caused him to give up his life. And he gave up the ghost. The reproach he endured proved his love. Can I say this? The robe that he wore proved his love. In chapter 19 and verse number 2, the Bible says, And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. By allowing them to put that robe on him, he proved his love for you and I. You see, when Jesus left the, the, the Father in the glory of heaven and stepped into the womb of Mary and came forth as a babe in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, He put on humanity. If you will, He put off His glory and put on humanity. And He lived in this world a sinless, perfect life. But when they put that robe on Him... That was them signifying to him their humanity is being put on him. It was one thing for him to put on humanity and put on flesh, knowing that he would live a sinless, perfect life. But when they put their humanity on him, they were saying, we don't want what you have. What we have is good enough. It was a robe of humanity. It was a robe, my dear friends, that was heedless. That robe that they put on him showed that they rejected the robe of righteousness that he would put on them. They put their robe on him. It was a robe of humiliation. It would be like you and I going down to Walmart or somewhere and being sucked away into a van and taken off somewhere and being beaten and tortured and told that we had to swear allegiance to Russia or we would be killed. We'd have to denounce being an American and to become some foreign hostile government. We'd have to surrender allegiance to Afghanistan or Iran or Iraq. My dear friends, I love America. Can I say Jesus loved heaven? And he come to bring heaven to man. And when they put that robe on him, they were saying, your heaven is worthless. Swear allegiance to us. He proved his love. Oh, what love by the robe he wore. Can I say this? He proved his love by the reverence he maintained. Everything Jesus did, he did to please the Father. He came to do the will of him that sent him. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prayed three times for the cup to pass from him. And by the way, I've heard preachers all my life saying he was praying not to go to Calvary. Hogwash, he came to this world to go to Calvary. When he looked in that cup, and he saw that cup that he was going to have to bear, he knew what Calvary was. He knew that the Lord was going to lay on him the iniquity of us all. Who do you think uh, told Isaiah to pin it down? What can I say? What he was praying for. You've got to understand. Jesus didn't treat his body like we treat our body. Some of y'all, if you don't get eight hours sleep, you're, you're a bear in the morning. Some of you need more than eight hours. Jesus didn't rest his body like we rest our bodies. Many times Jesus didn't take time to eat like we take time to eat. See, Jesus just, he knew he was just going to need this body for a little while. Huh? We, we, we treat our body for the long haul. We hope we're going to be like Brother Jack and be 84 one day. I don't know if I'll make it, brother, but if I do, I hope I look as good as you. Huh? But listen. Jesus knew this body was temporary. Jesus was doing the will of the Father. A lot of times when the, when the disciples were sleeping, he was up in the mountain praying. This old body got weak. 
if you study the Bible, you'll see as he prayed, he sweat as it were great drops of blood. His body was hemorrhaging in the garden. He was under attack in the garden. The devil tried to kill him in the garden. If the devil could have killed him in the garden, he wouldn't have been God. He wouldn't have made it to Calvary. You and I have had no hope. Uh, uh, so every bull of Bashan was dispatched, uh, and he's trying to kill him in the garden. Uh, that's why he went to his disciples and said, What, can you not watch with me for one hour? Uh, uh, they nodded off to sleep while he's out there agonizing for his life. Uh, and the Lord sent angels to minister unto him. Uh, what he was praying for is that he wouldn't die in the garden. The cup that he was praying would pass uh, was the cup of death. Uh, he was praying to make it to Calvary. Uh, hey, if his disciples would have been what they should have been, uh, the angels wouldn't have had to minister to him. They could have ministered unto him. Uh, and my dear friends, if we are what we should be, uh, hey, there will be a lot more get done for the cause of Christ. Uh, can I say, through it all, even when it looked like he was going to die in the garden, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Through it all, he maintained reverence for the Father. Let me ask you a question. This world is looking to see and find Christians that are real. How many of you have heard somebody say, well, I don't want to go to church, and nothing but a bunch of hypocrites go there. You ever heard that? Uh, I heard uh, Alyssa's family told me that one time. No, I'm just teasing. No, that's their mentality. You know why? Because they don't see many real Christians. You know when they'll know you're real? Is when in your darkest hour you still maintain reverence for the Father. Regardless of what you face, you still glorify God in it all. We find, oh, what love. That's how they'll know you love God. That's how we know He loved God and that He loved us. He proved it by the reverence he maintained. Can I say this? He proved his love by the ridicule he faced. Uh, listen, it was one thing for the crowd to mock him as he come through with the cross. It was one thing for the crowd to spit upon him, and they did when he bore his cross. But the real ridicule he faced was while he hung there, and all the devils of hell were needling him and telling him he was nothing, that Satan was going to prevail, that this was the end, that he was going to die, and it was over. And he was ridiculed while he hung on the cross by the very enemy himself. And yet, he uttered not a word, and he took it. Oh, what love. Oh, what love. And I say... He proved his love by the relevancy he displayed. Look in chapter 19. I want you to see this. Very important. Jesus is on the cross bearing the sins of the whole world, all of mankind. He's been tortured and beaten. He's been ridiculed by earth and by hell. And yet, while he's still on the cross... He has the faculties to realize what was relevant for the hour. In chapter 19, look at verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then, he saith, then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. He proved his love by the relevancy he displayed while he's hanging there he realizes Mary will not be taken care of once he goes back to heaven and he looks by and he sees John by the way John was the only disciple that was there and he looks at John he said John well, he starts with Mary he says mother behold thy son he's referring to John John behold thy mother he's referring to Mary and from that hour John took Mary to his own home and took care of Mary. What relevancy? Listen, a lot of times we'll hear people testify. I want to thank God for hearing and answering prayer. And you'll hear folks say, I want to thank God for 
answering the little things and taking care of the little things. You would think with all the weight of the sin of the world on him, the last thing he would care about is who's going to take care of Mary. But no, that was just as relevant as paying our sin debt. Oh, my dear, only God could do that. Only God could stay so focused with what he's going through to continue to take care of even his mother. Oh, what a God we serve. Friend, uh, while he's taking care of somebody's big problem, he still cares about you, and he'll take care of your little problem. Uh, that's just how big a God he is. Uh, oh, what love. Uh, and I say this. He proved his love by the redemption he secured. Say, so why did Jesus have to die this terrible death so that you and I wouldn't have to go to hell? See, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Do not believe people that say Jesus was murdered or Jesus was killed. No, he gave his life. He made the choice, the conscience choice, to die for our sins. And his blood was not spilled. He shed his blood. It was purposely and shed from his body to be the propitiation for our sin. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 9, 4, 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins, the mercy seat for our sins. That's His Son. Uh, Romans 5, 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man uh, will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended His love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, of course, you know John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Uh, my dear friends, He bled and died, uh, was buried, uh, and rose again under His own power the third appointed day uh, uh, for one reason, uh, that you and I could be saved from our sins uh, uh, so that all the laws that were written against us uh, could be taken out of the way. Uh, so every filthy, vile thing that we ever committed could be cleansed and washed uh, so we can be robed in his righteousness uh, so we can be justified by faith uh, so we can be uh, adopted into the family of God whereby we cry Abba Father uh, hey uh, he died to make us heirs and joint heirs to the throne of God uh, hey he did this to show how much he really loved us uh, oh what love friend he loves you you say, Preacher, I don't know what, what I've done. It don't matter. He loves you. He's proved his love because he chose to die for your sin. He just didn't die for you. He died for your sin. And he paid your sin debt. And friend, if you die and go to hell, you'll do it over Jesus' dead body. You don't have to die and go to hell. He died so you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He died that you might have life and life more abundantly my dear friends he displayed what love really is in this world people want acceptance and love you know both are found in Jesus Christ you'll find no one that will ever love you like Jesus does and you'll find that you'll never be more accepted than when Jesus saves you and you're accepted in the beloved Jesus accepts you just as you are, a filthy, rotten, no good, vile sinner. When you come to him, he'll make you a saint of God. Mm -hmm. Say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. Jesus does. He already paid for it. All he asks you to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. Oh, what love. I thought about this in John 15, 9. Jesus said this. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Hmm? You know how you continue in his love? Just showing him you love him back. By living by faith. By living what he set forth in the scriptures for us to live. A lost person can't live a Christian life. 
lost person says a Christian life's too hard. It is for a lost person, but not for a saved person. You get saved, it's amazing what God does in your life. Uh, let me just say this. Just feel compelled to say this. Brother Donald, I do all the dope I want to do. I do. I do all the carousing around I want to do. I do all the whoremongering I want to do. I drink all the booze I want to drink. There's just one thing. Brother Ray, when Jesus saved me, he changed my want tos. I just don't want to do any of that. I do all of it I want to do, and I don't do any of it because I don't want to. Uh, why? Because he changed my want tos. Uh, hey, before I got saved, I didn't like really going to church. I got drugged to church. I had a drug problem. Mama drugged me to church. And I, I really didn't like them songs that took up two pages in the hymn book because they were always slow and took forever to sing. Huh? That one, press on, weary pilgrim, press on. I thought I was going to die before we got to end that song. I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like any of that stuff. Uh, I didn't know what my granddaddy was talking about. He's up there hollering and screaming and splitting and spitting and slobbering, wiping sweat with a dish towel. Uh, I didn't understand all of it. I just didn't uh, care for it. Uh, I wanted a baseball glove and a baseball in my hand. Uh, didn't really care about all that church business uh, till the third Saturday night of March, uh, 1974, uh, when I realized, oh, what love uh, he had for me. Uh, that night I got born again. Uh, all of a sudden I started loving the church house. Uh, I started loving them old songs. Uh, I started loving that Bible being preached. Uh, hey, he changed my one twos. Uh, hey, because he showed me how much he loved me. Uh, and I fell in love with him. Uh, oh, what love Jesus has. Uh, and he loves even you. I wonder this morning. Are you a recipient of his love? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior is his love real in your life if not in a moment we're going to have an invitation we invite you to come to Jesus you say preacher I don't know how to be saved you come we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved if you know you're lost it's easy to get saved you say preacher I am saved what a blessing how's your love toward him What are the others seeing you? Do they see a Christian in name only? Or do they see somebody that really loves Jesus? You know, one of the greatest things can be said about you is that you really love Jesus. God help us to love Him because of the love He displayed for us. Every one of us ought to be in hell today. The reason we're not because of the love of God. If you're here today and you're lost, you're not in hell because God loves you and He wants to save you. And today might be your last chance to get saved. I wouldn't turn Him away. He loves you. Uh, it, it, if I could put it in a fleshly, earthly sense, He's down on one knee offering you more than a ring. He's offering you the keys to heaven. All He's asking for you to do is to accept His invitation. Will you come to Jesus today? If you're saved... When was the last time you really, really told him you loved him? When was the last time you really thanked him for that great love he showed you? I wonder today, will you do business with him? Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Folks are coming. If you're here not saved, why don't you come? We'd love to introduce you to Jesus be the greatest day in your life they're picking out a song let's pray Father we bless your holy name thank you for loving a wretch like me thank you for all you endured on Calvary Lord we didn't even begin to scratch the surface of the pain and the suffering you endured but God I pray that, Lord you take our feeble efforts and the sweet Holy Ghost would speak to hearts God, I pray for somebody here today unsaved. Lord, they wouldn't leave that way. Lord, they'd see how much you love them, what you did for them personally. Lord, they'd come and trust in you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray for the saints of God. They'd just fall in love with you again. 
Lord, we'd have revival if we'd just love you right. So God, do a work around here this morning. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.